Hi, math people. <clears throat> uh, specifically, my math people. Hi. Uh, so I wanted to look at radical equations, specifically with extraneous solutions, one more time, because our homework assignment didn't have any extraneous solutions, and I want to convince you that this is actually a thing. So radical equations, the equations that are 100% more rad because uh, they have this thing in them. Uh, so the idea behind solving radical equations is really no different than solving regular equations, like linear equations, maybe what you're used to back in Algebra 1. Uh, but this time around, uh, we, we have an added step. And, and that added step actually does complicate things. That added step is to deal with the radical, and that does actually bring in this idea that is, that is called extraneous solutions. So let me convince you that extraneous solutions is a thing and uh, what we do to address them. So when you're solving radical equations, the idea is to just solve it, and then once you have your answer, check to see if it works. So um, here I have 0 is equal to the square root of 2x plus 4. Notice the pause because uh, the radical kind of just ends and then plus 4 is at the end. Anyways, uh, first thing, move over that 4. Um, you're going to get negative 4 is equal to the square root of 2x. To undo the square root, we square. Um, they're inverses of one another. So uh, here when I square both sides, I'm left with, well, the left side, negative 4 times negative 4 to get 16. And then the right side, 2x, because the radical now goes away. So it's no longer radical. Um, now I divide both sides by 2, and I simply get x is equal to 8. Now, is that true? That's the thing. We, we just plug it in to check and, and see if it's right. So when I take that 8 and I plug it in for x, I did that here in red, um, we'll, we'll see, well, is it? And, and notice, this is what I do. It's just a personal thing I do. Uh, when I'm checking solutions, I, I put a little question mark above my equal sign because... You know, I know it's not true, but just bear with me here. Um, yeah, so is 0 equal to the square root of 2 times x, or 2 times 8, and then plus 4? Is that a true statement? Um, 2 times 8 is 16, so the square root of 16 is 4. Um, is it true that, you know, 0 is equal to 4 plus 4? Is 0 equal to 8? No, right? Yeah, no. Uh, so, no soul. Uh, this problem has no soul. No, no solutions. Uh, this, this is not... A workable solution. This 8 is actually extraneous. Um, so we don't consider it a solution to this radical equation. Let me convince you with a graph because of course graphs are the way to go with convincing uh, mathematical arguments. Okay, so let's take a look at what I've done here. I went ahead and graphed the right side of the equation, uh, that square root of 2x and then plus 4. So this black curve that we see, um, this is actually the graph. Um, now, if you remember the equation, it was, it was uh, you know, we're checking to see if 0 is equal to the square root of 2x and then plus 4. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to graph y is equal to 0. Um, and, of course, it's just that uh, horizontal line, right, crossing through the origin there. Um, so as we can clearly see here, uh, this black curve, this, uh, this graph of the square root of 2x and then plus 4, it, it doesn't ever cross through um, 0 here. We never attain a y value of 0. Um, as you can see here, the lowest y value we get to is 4, and then it just keeps going up and up and up and up and up and up and up. So uh, we, we never achieve that value. It's impossible for this, uh, this curve to hit that value of 0. Uh, let's do one more, uh, because it does get a little bit more complicated. All right, the last one we'll look at. Um, I have the square root of negative 5x plus 21, and that is equal to x minus 3. So I'm going to solve this. Let's see if there is a solution, or if it's extraneous, or if there's both, perhaps. All right. Uh, so I have the square root, and I want to undo it. Uh, so we're going to square. Square both sides. On the left side, it, the square just goes away, uh, and you're left with that negative 5x plus 21. The right side, uh, you do have um, that x minus 3 squared. That is a binomial. You do have to use either your box method approach or distribute accordingly. Um, no cat killing, right guys? Um, so you're going to get x squared minus 6x plus 9. Uh, and I want to set this equal to 0 because I now have a quadratic in play. And, and the idea behind solving quadratics, you can set it equal to 0. See if you can maybe factor or use the quadratic formula. You know, whatever your preference is. Um, so I'm going to move over that 5x, move over that negative 21. I have 0 is equal to the x, x squared minus x minus 12. And it turns out you can actually solve this by factoring. Uh, which is, in my opinion, a lot quicker than a uh, quadratic formula. Um, I found two factors of negative 12 that add into negative 1. Uh, I found them to be negative 4 and 3, right? Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12, and negative 4 
plus 3 is negative 1. So that does work out for us. Uh, I use the zero product property. I get a solution of 4 and a solution of negative 3. Now, I have two solutions here. I have to test both. Um, so when I plug in this 4, uh, and you can see I just kind of did that in red here, um, I have negative 5 times 4 and then plus 21 underneath the radical. That actually comes out to 1. The square root of 1 is just 1. Um, and then on the right side, 4 minus 3 is also 1. 1 is equal to 1. Hey, that works. I went ahead and boxed that 4. 4 is a viable solution here. This is an idea of plugging it in to see that 4 is not extraneous. Now, if I do the same exact idea with that negative 3, you'll see that it doesn't come out as clean. Uh, I'm going to plug in negative 3 for x, negative 3 for x. Um, inside the radical, I get 36. Now, is it true that 36, the square root of 36 is equal to negative 6? The, the idea is no. The square root of 36, um, we're going to get 6 here. 6 is not equal to negative 6. Um, this guy is extraneous. This negative 3 is an extraneous solution. Um, so I went ahead and crossed that off here. 4 is the only workable solution. Uh, once more, let me convince you with a graph, because a graph is a very compelling argument. So let's do that right now. Okay, I know I said I was going to go to the graph, but I'm going to do one of these things where I make my video uh, a little bit longer than necessary and get less views, but whatever, for the sake of math. Am I right, guys? Um, at the very end of example two, I came to this point where I had the square root of 36, uh, and I asked myself, is that equal to negative 6? Uh, and I ultimately said no. I said, well, 6 is not equal to negative 6. Um, and that this is all true. You know, that, that I think it was negative 3, right? That came out to extraneous. That's, that's true. Um, but a lot of you guys might be sitting there thinking, well, wait a minute, Mr. McGrill, uh, isn't the square root of 36 plus or minus 6? Well, you're kind of looking at it a different way. So what I've done here is I've created, a, to, to the left, I've created a, um, a different scenario. What if we had x squared is equal to 36? Now, this is a totally different idea. Uh, when you take the square root of both sides here, yes, in this case, you've got a plus or minus 6. Uh, because both positive and negative 6 satisfy this equation. You have this uh, squared notion, and as we know, a negative times a negative is a positive. So both a positive and negative 6 here um, you know, is our solutions. They, they, they work for, um, for x. Now, this is, a, this is a separate scenario. Here we have, we're asking ourselves, is the square root of 36 equal to negative 6? There is nothing being squared. There is no squared notion in play. Um, so you're not considering that negative case. Uh, whereas in, in this scenario here, you have something squared. You have to consider that negative case. So uh, there is a difference between these two. Um, so I, I know that a lot of people were, or could be kind of confused by that thought. This is just how I personally settle that dispute. I'm sure that there are much more efficient ways. But I want to clarify here, these are two different things. When you're just taking the square root of 36, it's just 6. But if you're kind of solving in the context of an equation, well, you know, you, you can have that positive or negative 6 that satisfy this equation. So two different ideas. All right, now let's go to the graph. Okay, so what I have done is I've taken uh, the right side and the left side of that equation that we were dealing with, and I made them two separate graphs. So I took that square root of negative 5x plus 21, and I made that um, a graph, right? And, and, and what I have here is this, this black curve. And then I took that x minus 3, and then I also graphed that as well. I made that um, this blue line here, x minus 3. So I have a um, radical curve, and I have a uh, linear equation, this blue line. Now, the idea behind what I've just established, I've established a uh, system of equations. And the idea behind solving systems graphically is you find out where they intersect. So let's figure out where they intersect. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to zoom out a bit just so that I can see the full, full graph and, and verify, you know, are there multiple points in which they intersect? And as we can see here, no, no, I'm going to go back to the zoomed in view. Very clearly, we only intersect at a single point. Um, and I'm going to click this point. Now, the x component would be our answer. x is equal to 4 is what we got. And I'm telling you right now, we have x is equal to 4 once more. Uh, so this is how I got my solution. We can also do it graphically. So um, more proof for you on that note. Um, one other thing that I did want to do just for fun is I wanted to figure out where we got that negative 3. So in that, um, in that you know, radical equation that we were just solving, we also got negative 3. So why? And where did it come from? Was it totally made up? No, actually it wasn't. So what I'm going to do is actually this. I'm going to take the radical component and I'm going to reflect it across the x-axis. Now, what I'm about to do, it's, it's, um, it's not a solution. It's not a workable solution. I'm just showing you where it came into play, and that's it. 
if I graph negative, um, and then the square root of, of uh, negative 5x plus 21, you'll see here that I have this bottom component to a curve, almost like a sideways parabola, and we do intersect one more time. Now this point right here, that's your negative three. So where did it come into play? It's reflection of that square root um, just by, by adding an, uh, placing a negative in front of it. So I wanna clarify that was extraneous, not a part of our solution. Our solution is only four. Just so you know, that's where the negative three came into play. So I'm gonna continue mathing on. I hope that you do the same. Uh, I'll see you in the next video.